Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. It's time to check out a new SSD from SK Hynix. So a little quick background here. You know, if you're used to your SSDs in the two and a half inch uh, size drive, this is a SATA uh, SSD. These max out somewhere around 550 to 600 on the read and write, depending upon the model. Uh, that's about the upper limit that you're going to get. However, this SSD uses an M.2 form factor and NVMe stands for Non-Volatile Memory Express. And the same way that your SATA 2.5 inch drives made your 3.5 inch drive almost obsolete. I can't really say obsolete because these still have uh, a, a useful purpose. But the same way these became pretty much the standard, uh, these are now very common. And I won't say again that they've replaced these, but it's going in that direction. Previously, I reviewed the one terabyte version of this model. I'll post a link to that. Now your NVMe M.2 drives like this now uh, they really open the door to some screaming fast speeds. So whereas these were maxing out around 600 megabytes a second, uh, these, when they first came out, you know, you got to 1500 and then 2000, 3000. There's some of these things that are uh, almost double that now. Uh, the specs on this one here, I'll post so you can see those as we get it out of the box. There are your user instructions in multiple language, uh, multiple languages, and it's really pretty simple. Just be really careful when you're handling handling it, uh, and it shows you how to install it into the socket. And this is your terms and conditions. Uh, I think this is your warranty information. Yep, warranty information. And then the unit here is inside this little protective container. Now, it's in this protective plastic, so what I'm going to do right now is put on my anti-static wrist strap. You can pick these up for a few dollars, and they are something I <clears throat> certainly recommend, given uh, the static discharge this time of the year, when the air is dry. It's just a real quick, easy way to make sure you uh, reduce any chances of static causing any harm. So we'll open this up. It says biodegradable package, at least 90% degradation within 180 days. All right, that's good. Nice to see that they're being environmentally friendly. And get this thing open. There we go. So this is the drive and if you've never seen one of these before it's about the size of a stick of gum. They're very simple, very lightweight. Hard to believe there's two terabyte worth of storage on this little device. And both the one terabyte and the two terabyte have the same read and write specs and that is uh, up to 3,500 megabytes a second on the read and 3,200 megabytes a second on the write. So just a little bit slower. And again, keep in mind, those are the upper limits. Uh, you know, when you use these things, a lot of times you'll see close to that. You may not see that exact amount because a lot of times those things are measured, uh, you know, in a laboratory under ideal conditions. But we'll see how close we actually get to those numbers in a little bit. But first, here's a quick information slide that I pulled from the SK Hynix website. The print is a little small, so if you need to look at it in more detail, you can check it out on the SK Hynix website. But anyway, uh, this covers the basic information for the 500 gigabyte, uh, one terabyte, and two terabyte, which is what we have today. Again, I already reviewed the one terabyte. So uh, the performance numbers here are very similar between the one and two. In fact, they're pretty much exactly the same. So I would expect to see uh, the performance to be very similar between the one and two terabyte. So next, 
are a couple of more slides that I pulled from the website before. Now they've, it looks like they've revamped the website and I can't find these slides anymore, but I'd, I'd save these from uh, when I did the one terabyte review. So the information here should still be relevant, but you can look at the first slide here and it sort of shows you in detail uh, what's going on at the, uh, I won't say microscopic level, but at the chip level. So uh, you can see it's a PCIe NVMe 3.0. They do have a 4.0 version, and uh, I'll show you that here in just a little bit. I don't have one, but I'll show you on the website uh, what they have. Uh, but we've got the 128 layer of the NAND. Uh, let's see, you've got the proprietary controller that SK Hynix uses. Uh, let's move on to the next slide here, and this one, yeah, it shows the read and write speeds again. It's the same as uh, uh, with the one terabyte unit. And here's a quick screenshot of the P41 series. I don't have a sample yet, but uh, as soon as I get one, we'll go ahead and review it. But it uses uh, uh, PCIe 4.0, and the speeds there are, of course, screaming fast. Oh, one other thing I want to point out. So if you're over here on the SK Hynix website, checking out their drives, if you scroll all the way down past the specs, all the way down, they've got download files. But if actually you go down here to the bottom right, you'll see these tiny little, little, uh, tiny little links. It's almost like they're trying to hide it. But this is the uh, drive manager. And when you download that and install it and run it, it's a nice little tool here. Again, it's called the SK Hynix Drive Manager. And uh, you've got the summary, which sort of goes over the basics for the drive, shows you the drive status here, which is good. Here are your, uh, your smart attributes settings and then details here that go into a level that the average person would not really understand or have a use for it's still interesting if you need some some uh, really deep information so anyway that is a nice little tool that you can download okay next i'll go ahead and run some of the synthetic benchmarks just to see where the numbers come in and they usually come in real close to what they advertised specs are. And then for sort of some condensed real world testing, I'll just move some chunks of data back and forth. Now we're running the Atto disk benchmark and I like to sort of monitor the thermals over here. And I'm at about 47 and 54 on this particular drive. That's pretty normal. I do have a fan blowing across the top of the motherboard to help keep things cool sort of simulates uh, what you would have in a case since I'm operating without a case. And I'm seeing numbers that are pretty close to the one terabyte drive, which is really not a surprise. That's really what I would expect to see. And the testing is all done. So we see the drive dropping back down to the normal temperature at idle. Uh, we got to a max of about 53C. And we're finishing up here the testing with Crystal Disk, and uh, it did peak out here at around 54C. So uh, we're real close to what I was seeing temperature-wise when I ran the Atto testing. All right, so that test has wrapped up, and these numbers are very similar to what I saw with the one terabyte version of this drive, which again is not a surprise. We're using the same controller. Uh, so I would expect the speeds to be very similar. Now you can run these tests back to back over and over and your numbers will vary a little bit uh, from test to test. But the big takeaway that I've learned uh, with these drives is you've got to have some airflow. Now again, this is my test system and uh, obviously I don't have a case. So to simulate some airflow, I've got a fan blowing pretty much directly on it. But uh, the takeaway there is make sure you have good airflow moving across your solid state drive or add a heat sink like this drive has. Uh, either one will go a long way towards keeping your temperatures in check. Okay, so those were some of the synthetic benchmarks. Now the synthetic benchmarks are good uh, to run those programs, to run that software. If you wanna get a reality check, uh, you know, is my drive really running where I think it should be? So you can run those and get that information, but real world really comes down to what kind of files am I moving, how many, how large are they, uh, what am I moving to and from, and what's going on on my network. All of those things will factor into the speeds. Now, 
uh, I'm going to move uh, a big chunk of data from the solid state drive from uh, this one here to my NAS box and it just has a couple of three and a half inch drives that are pretty slow and clunky when compared to a solid state drive. So I'll just go ahead and paste that data on here and we're going to see things. Yeah, I mean, those are decent speeds. They usually come down after the buffers uh, start to run dry and then we stabilize right around here and it will vary a little bit. But this is what I would expect uh, when moving a big chunk of data to my NAS box. Now going the other way, moving it from the NAS box over to this drive again, you're limited by the speeds of uh, the drives in the NAS box. So I'll go ahead and kill that. Now you're going to see a big difference here when we move the data to another SSD, another solid state drive, which is my C drive. We'll just go ahead and dump it right onto the C drive and you're going to see some screaming fast speeds here. Yeah, we're three and a half, 3.49, 3.51 uh, gigabytes uh, a second. So let's do that again just to see it. Yeah, that's pretty fast. And we'll move another chunk or block of data here, quite a few files from my one solid state drive over to the SK Hynix drive. And we'll go the opposite direction here from the SK Hynix drive over to my other solid state. Yeah, right at about the same speed. Okay, so you get some impressive speeds when you're moving a very large file or a group of files, one, one big block of data. But when you have a uh, folder like this, which is full of all kinds of individual files, you can see that the speeds are very different. Considerably slower. Now it'll pick up here in a little bit, but you can see, and we're only moving a total, uh, total amount of uh, roughly 100 gig. So if this was one contiguous file, uh, it would have popped through that almost instantly. But you can see now that we're moving a lot of little files, you can see uh, it slows down a little bit. And this is completely normal. And that was writing to the uh, SK Hynix drive. Now we're going to go from this drive over to my C drive, actually, which is now this drive here. And we can see how fast that is. Okay, I already copied it. Now we have to come over here and do the paste. And we'll look at the speeds there. And I would expect this to be uh, roughly the same sort of transfer uh, in terms of speed. Yeah, and we're seeing roughly the same. And again, the slower speeds when you're moving a lot of uh, small individual files, this is completely normal. All right, so the testing showed that the performance was pretty much right there where I expected it to be. It uh, meets all the specifications as advertised. And uh, really the performance between the two, one terabyte or two terabyte, is virtually identical. And of course, your mileage will vary depending upon what kind of data you're moving back and forth and uh, where you're moving it to and from. But overall, I'm very happy with the performance. Okay, so pricing right now on Amazon, the one terabyte version is $107, $108. And the two terabyte here is, they're usually about double, so $198, so a little cheaper than uh, buying two one terabyte drives. They actually have a 500 gigabyte, half terabyte for $61.99, so uh, that's a pretty decent price too. So overall, I like this drive, screaming fast, does everything it's supposed to do. And uh, you know, less than $200, you get two terabytes of storage. So I would give this the Overclockers Club Gold Award. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.